is Sailor Beck and you rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. So finally, finally, I'm getting to this uh, uh, really good article in Doctor Who magazine that uh, I've been wanting to get to it for ages, actually. I think the ma since the magazine came out, when did it come out? A couple of weeks ago? It seems like a while ago. But boy, we, we have had our uh, uh, notice taken by uh, some major clangers, I, I, I think dropped by Rusty Davis. Uh, when I think major clangers, they were talking about Doomsday. And, and look, mate, I, 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 the rumor is that he didn't see it until after it went out, But and there's a lot going on, but there was a major publicity hanger, right? It was a major PR uh, um Oh, cell phone. It, well, it didn't go down well. And then just as I think you're coming out of that, you you had uh, uh, Jinx, uh, Jinx Monsoon happen this week. So I actually got uh, somebody gave me some really important context and background for uh, uh, Jinx Monsoon, which I think might change things. But really, it, it, what, it, what it boils down to is the proof is going to be, be in the pudding, right? We're going to see what Russell's de Russell is doing. Look, I, there's a very, very strong possibility that he has been uh, uh, co-opted by this weird, weird, I call it mind virus, that makes decent, normal, sensible, moral people, which I, which is what I, I, will, I would describe Russell Davis, and most people, quite frankly, just lose their freaking mind and, like, be kind of, like, pushed into a point where they... Support grooming, right? And grooming, by grooming, I mean uh, 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 normalizing adult sexuality for children, right? And it's, the amazing thing is this. Everybody who's okay with it, well, not everybody, most people who are okay with it don't have any children, right? Vast majority of people do not have any children. Uh, um, yeah, okay, yeah. I, I'm, frankly, I think there's a place for drag in the world. I would, I would like people to join. John Nathan Turner, actually, interestingly enough, had... Uh, one of his ideas for BBC Video after the year's day, he was trying to sell this to the BBC as well, was to put out a compilation of the BBC uh, dragged, uh, uh, drag hacks. So we wouldn't call it dragged from the archives. So there's, there's definitely a, a, you know, going back a long way, a, a market for this. Is, 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 it a, uh, uh, is it a gateway to uh, normalise adult sexuality with children i don't think it necessarily has to be look when i met danny larue you know and panto it certainly wasn't right well it wasn't for me anyway <laughs> don't don't know about danny mate but uh, um actually don't i don't want to ask that was the 70s who knows what's going on anyway but uh, uh um yeah yeah so we're we're in a bit of a uh a, a, a concerning time i would say at uh uh in doctor who a bit of a concerning time about the future of doctor who. so you know the excitement that we've all had about about uh the new rust davis new era has really taken a kick in the balls right uh, uh and you know, obviously if you're female uh, the, the 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 feminine equivalent but it's definitely taking a, a, a kick in the balls which is why it's taken me a while to get to the story which is all about the 60th anniversary special so you know well my basic point about this is um i'm remaining optimistic until i really have reason not to be and right now i, I again the context i i got about about uh, uh jinx which i'll be going over on my uh, live stream on saturday night 7 p.m uk will be uh, uh, uh it means it, it to me it seems more likely than not is going to be not a grooming type of situation, right? And if it is, it is. I'm sorry, but I, I hopefully it's not. That's basically where I am. Hopefully it's not. Hopefully Rossley Davis understands that something that's not going to be well appreciated by the viewing public, which is, you know, the bottom line, right? It's, it's interesting. Amazon recently, uh, it came out. Is it a rumor or is it a report? I don't know. It came out that they stopped using audience, ra uh, audience appreciation ranking because uh, uh, queer stories, I mean, that, that, that's their terminology, not mine, uh, uh, is off-putting for most viewers. So, uh, you know, they, they don't want to hear it, right? They don't want to hear it. So, I, I don't know. I hope Ross D. Davis wants to hear it. I do not know. But definitely, it's dampened the excitement for, for the 60th anniversary and, and much more for the sh shooting out with stuff. Time will tell. Time will tell. Uh, uh, listen. Maybe, maybe some, uh, 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 you know, some Nicola Bryant sexy, Nicola Bryant -esque sexy shots of Millie Gibson might do the trick. Do you remember that? Like, like Nicola Bryant kept having to do these like weird sort of semi 
not porn, but certainly salacious uh, uh, photo shoots, right? It's lots and lots of... Yeah, you would have thought John Nathan Turner was glopping off, you know, <laughs> all over the place, but no, by aim to Ma Matthew Waterhouse, probably, but uh, Nicola Bright, no, but yeah, that was a bit weird. So maybe, maybe something like that, like that might might remove the uh, 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 the sheen that, that we are... Oh, she might be the wrong word. The, the sheen of disappointment that we, we may well be living under. But anyway, anyway, uh, uh, look... Generally speaking, I think it's worth being optimistic, right? I think it's worth being optimistic at least for the 60s. So we're, we're going to uh, uh, look at this article in uh, uh, about the 60s. Where is it? Oh, yeah, from this month's Doctor Who magazine. Good issue of Doctor Who magazine, for, uh, you know, quite frankly. So, uh, yeah, we're going to... Let me pull that up one second. It's, there we go. Now, what's it? I'm kind of miffed with Pocket Mags, which is what I get my digital subscription from. Because... Um, they only let you uh, download eight pages of this a day. Frankly, you should be able to download the whole PDF in, in, in one go. I, I'll get, I guess I'll go to a BitTorrent site or something and download it that way. Uh, uh, it's, ju it's just kind, kind, kind of irritating. But anyway, so this is the uh, um, uh, article that we're going on. The Three Drakes, which again, yeah, I think the sixth anniversary, we're probably in pretty safe ground, is going to be five Doctor-ish on steroids and rather good, right? We're probably in pretty good. I actually just noticed this uh, uh, as they're talking to, I guess that's, uh, how do you pronounce the name? Chanya? Hanya? Haya? I don't know. Uh, Chanya Button? Uh, uh, I like they got her in the Eighth Doctor um, console room TARDIS, uh, uh, like vintage TV that you pull down of those that, that, what's it called again? The squeegee thing, you pulled it down. That's actually a real vintage TV. Not a lot of people know that, but it really was a genuine 1950s TV, I think. Uh, uh, so that'd be fun. So yeah, look, we're going to be looking looking at the uh, sixth anniversary. I can ask you, hit the like, share, and subscribe button. That'll be awesome. Thank you very much. If you're on Rumble, definitely subscribe. I want to build up that Rumble channel. If you're not on Rumble, head on over to Rumble. It's all worth it's where all the cool kids are. Do you know, basically? Look, they need to get more uh, content makers on there. And like, come on, Rumble. It's the, you, you, Rumble's really on the, you know, on the, what's it, on the bubble right now to blow away YouTube. In terms, in terms of my, my live streams, I get four times the views on Rumble. So, uh, yeah, so please head over to Rumble, subscribe there. Look in the video notes. You'll find my Instagram, my, uh, which I hardly use. <coughs> Twitter, I use a lot. The, I, you can find all my video content on Twitter. <coughs> I got no, look, I'm paying for Twitter Blue, so I, I'm trying to decide whether or not to keep it. I'll keep it for like three months, but all my video content's over on Twitter, uh, YouTube, obviously. Yeah, what can I tell you? Still there. Um, uh, where else is there? Just look at the video, Substack, all those things are good. Fine, let's start reading this article. The three directors, uh, uh, so one I'm very excited about, Rachel Talali, have a lot of confidence in her. Uh, Hanya Chanya Button, uh, never heard of her before, and I think Tom Kingsley actually has. Quite a, quite some good form, but let, let, let's hear what they got to say, right? Let's hear what they got to say. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we we, yeah, we need some more stuff, Russell. Okay, we need we, we especially after the last couple of weeks we had, we need some more stuff. Let's have a read of this. Directors are a bit like the uh, doctors in that you rarely find more than one in a place at a time. But for Rachel Talali, Tom Kingsley, and Chanya, but Hanya. Chanya? Every time I have trouble saying this. Chanya Barton, the director's helming this year's Doctor Who 6th Anniversary Specials uh, Productions uh, schedulers were able to waive the Blinowitz limitation of... Who wrote, who wrote this? This is a, a well-written interview. Hang on, let me have a look back. I didn't give, yeah, give, give whoever it was credit. Paul Kirkley! Oh, Paul Kirkley knows what he's doing. Okay, doink. Uh, but lim limitation effect. Uh, so we can all oh, talk to him. Uh, 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 and convene all three of them at the same time. Well, yeah, I thought it'd be three different interviews. They're kind of merging into one. It's a space-time event as production for their stories overlap during the summer of 2022. As a, as a director, you hang out with lots of different crews and lots of different actors, but you never uh, hang out with other directors, says Tom. I guess that's the case. I never really thought about it before, right? Uh, so it was great to be able to spend some time with Rachel and Chania. <laughs> Kanye, Kanye, please give me a hint how to pronounce your name. Uh, it was nice to celebrate the good times and moan about the bad times. Uh, we really had a strong bond together, agrees, agrees Rachel. It wasn't about who was, com uh, it wasn't about who was competing with who. It was about how can we make this whole unit work. So yeah, this is something that uh, again fills me with optimism because this is the attitude that we really had from the production team in the 2005 to 2010, right? It was, 
a group of people working very hard, happily working very hard together to do the absolute best they can. And if you weren't around in that in that uh, 2005, 2010 temp time frame, that's really what it was like. Like, first, it was just amazement they got to work on Doctor Who. Secondly, it was complete amazement that it actually worked, right? Have you ever seen... Uh, um uh, Remembrance of the Daleks, right? The great cliffhanger when uh, 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 Ace is being surrounded by Daleks. They're like, exterminate! And she's trying to put the, the uh, uh, rocket uh, uh, rocket propel, propel grenade into the launcher. And, just, ah! and the Daleks walks in with like, uh, uh, within the, in the cliffhanger. Spoiler alert for what, 30 years ago? More than that. <laughs> walks in with this like device he made up, slightly similar to the thing of Spiridon. Uh, and he like confuses the Daleks. Ah! Right? But there's this great, and this is why I love Sylvester McCoy, there's this great moment in it where he's like, it worked, it actually worked. That was a production team in 2005, 2006. Like, what? People like this shit? Really? Get out of that. And it really was like that. So, uh, um, that okay, that's good news. I work, that feeling that of, uh, of unity and optimism working there to make something great. I'm glad that's back, right? I'm glad, and it, even if it's not real, at least they made it seem real, right? Uh, you didn't really get that in the Moffat years, by the way. They had a much higher turnover of other producers and, and lots of stories of Stephen Moffat chewing out people occasionally, but there was, yeah, there was a much higher turnover of um, uh, uh, production crew it, it, and, and the Moffat. So you really didn't get that feeling, and then Chibnall, I don't think anybody really... Did anybody really give a crap? No, I don't think so, because they knew they were working on a lame duck thing, which is weird, because by the time he got to Flux, I thought the production work was really quite good on, you know, on a lot of stuff. I thought some of that production work was really, really... I, I like the Dalek ship design. I like the Cybermen design. I thought, yeah, a lot of that production work was... was uh, I, I, I like Calvin Isler. Right, honestly, I genuinely did. I thought, oh, that was fun. Um... So, yeah, so I'm getting the same kind of vibe from this, which is good. Uh, so it was great to spend time together with, uh, with Rachel and, and Hania. I'm going to go with Hania, right? It was uh, nice to celebrate the good times and moan about the bad times. We had, okay, we've read all this already. Uh, how can we make it work? Uh, how can we make the whole unit work, which is, as Tom says, uh, isn't something you normally do as a director. Yeah, no, people, it, yeah, people are very invested, right? And again, I think Russell's able to do that because he's so invested, right? I think... Honestly, I, I, and again, it, this is like you learn with age, right? That every organization takes its cues from the person in charge, right? The, the, the person at the top takes its personality from it. And, and I'm glad we're seeing that again, right? Um, getting to know Rachel and Tom, who, who are both absolutely brilliant, was one of the loveliest things uh, about making these special concurs, uh, Hania. Uh, it was very, it's very rare to, um, it's very rare you get to do that and end up, uh, and it ended up a really, sp a, a, a special part, part of the process. Uh, we the three, uh, today the three directors attempt to reunite the three, today Doctor Who Magazine's attempt to reunite the three directors for a chat about the specials, uh, met with only limited success. We managed to lift, uh, Rachel and Tom from their own time streams, um, uh, onto the same Zoom call, but but Hania, uh, ha ha Hania is stuck in a time eddy. She's actually shooting a movie, so her contribution was recorded separately. Uh, if it helps her picture, uh, if it helps to picture her on a television dangling from the TARDIS ceiling, go right ahead. Uh, as the trio give the give us a lowdown on Rusty Davis, David Tennant, Catherine Tate, and the gangs uh, launch a Doctor Who into the latest incredible chapter of its six decade odyssey. <laughs> okay. So let's get into the, the interview. Oh, what's this? Uh, Curse of the Fatal Death? Uh, I'm intrigued to see how that ties in. Okay. So, uh, Doctor Who's sixth anniversary, uh, anniversary, you guys are in charge of the body. No pressure. Rachel's just laughing. Not at all. Uh, we didn't feel any. Rachel, you've got nothing to worry about. You've directed some of the best freaking episodes of Doctor Who ever. I, I, again, I, this is an unpopular opinion. I freaking love Twice Upon a Dime, okay? I absolutely adore it. And pretty much every episode you've done. Uh, it was a great honor, said Tom. These scripts are so good. Uh, and you're supported by such a good team, you really don't feel uh, under any pressure. Um, okay, that's very good. It does feel like a great privilege and a great responsibility. As someone who uh, who loves Doctor Who myself, it, it, it says uh, uh, Hanya, uh, and has such a, uh, was it, a love, uh, uh, such, uh, and who, ha who loves Doctor Who myself and has such a, 
lot of love and respect for the show and its fans. I am absolutely blown away by the opportunity to be involved with the anniversary. Okay, fine. We're looking we're looking her up a little bit. What's that? Chania Button. There we go. Chania Button director. Okay. What's she done? She looks very young, okay? She looks very young. Look at her IMDB. Good. Okay, she's talking the talk, isn't she? Right? She's definitely talking the talk. So she's done Frog Robot. Well, okay, that's, at least that sounds science fiction. Alpha uh, Alpha Omega, Burn, Burn, Burn. Uh, Vita and Virginia, World on Fire. There's a director of TV, two episodes of TV. The Spanish Princess and uh, The uh, Whistable Pearl. Okay, I've never heard of any of these things. Right, um... So there's nothing that really sounds very genre science fiction-y on this, does it? I mean, is there any, like, uh, a ravaged London in the midst of the Civil War and the battle line isn't race or religion, it's gender, uh, and that uh, uh, and the resource at stake isn't land, it's uh, wealth, it's reproduction. That sounds like quite an interesting idea. That does sound like quite an interesting... Okay, so at least that sounds science fiction-y, right? Uh, um... So it sounds like she's got an interest in sci-fi, right? Oh, shall we look at her Twitter? I'm scared. I'm scared. What are we going to see? Oh, firstly, she's quite attractive. Don't get me wrong. Um, okay, not uh, nothing really new going on there. Wow, these are... Okay, she hasn't posted anything since 2022. Uh, I like her already. This is, this is very good. Okay, that she doesn't use Twitter much. Uh, uh, I'm kind. I'm kind of involved with this. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of on, on board with her. Fine, let's give her the benefit of the doubt, right? Let's give her the benefit of the doubt. Um, but if she's talking the right, look. If she's lying, she's saying the right thing. So that's good by me. Okay. Uh, coming back to the sixes, Russell and David and Ka uh, with the sixes with Russell and David and Catherine and a whole group of people. Did it feel like a huge honor? Uh, that you have to live... Oh, this is not the question. This is her, this is her, her response, right? Uh, coming back to do the 60s with Russell and David and Catherine. And, see, that makes such a difference. Now I know who's speaking. Uh, Russell, David and Catherine and the whole group. It did it uh, uh, did feel like a huge honour. Well, again, I thought you have to live up to the importance of it. I, you know, I hope you do. I, I hope you do. And I think the pressure will come closer to uh, uh, will come closer to the broadcast right after transmission. And that's when I always turn off my social media, turn my social media off. Rachel, darling, you can keep it on. We like you, honey. We like you. You're doing good. Pa, everyone loves your work. Okay, we agree. Okay, absolutely. Everyone loves your work, Rachel. According to Russell and DBM, uh, D they threw themselves at you and begged you to come back. Well, I hope that's the case. Uh, well, they didn't have to work very hard, although I did make them work a little bit because uh, I had another offer, a very large offer at the same time. I wonder what that was. I guess we'll never know. Uh, Tom, this is your debut on Doctor Who, your first program you uh, a program you first discovered in 1993's radio drama The Paradise of Death. I'm not sure anyone's ever said that before. Yes, that's uh, it's uh, I don't know, Paradise. It was it any good? I don't know. It was better than the Ghost of End Space. <laughs> that's, that's that's not a huge compliment. Uh, um, yeah, when I was growing up, my parents didn't let us watch TV. That's not that's not good news. For a, uh, a, a a TV uh, director, right? Okay, but we used to listen to cassettes of sitcoms and stuff along uh, on long long car journeys. That's what I heard first at Doctor Who. It was an interesting way to encounter it because you had to imagine what uh, what it looked like. Man, that must have been really weird. What's his name again? Let's look up his, his IMDb. That must have been really genuinely weird, was it, Tom? Kingsley, let's let's look at his his IMDb. That's really strange. There we go. Tom Kingsley, director, Black Pond. Is that him? Um, director of Ghost. Okay, I mean, if this is the same guy, we don't have Doctor Who on his. Uh, 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 he doesn't have Doctor Who on his IMDb as yet, does he? That's, that's a bit weird. Why is it not there? Um, did Ghost, uh, this is going to hurt, true horror. Oh, it sounds like he's got a bit of form, right? Sounds like he might have a bit uh, a bit of form to direct Doctor Who, right? Uh, if this is Tom Kingsley. 
It sounds like it, doesn't it? Uh, the Darkest Universe. What's that? Known for Black Bond and, and Darkest Universe and Staff Let's Flats. I I've never heard, never heard any of these things. Okay, fine. Darkest Universe. What is the Darkest Universe? Let's see. The Darkest Universe is a BAFTA nominated. Uh, uh, director Will Sharp and Tom Zingsley is a real follow-up to the critically acclaimed Black Pond. I know, it doesn't sound like he's like, I've got, I got the right IMDb, but ah, whatever. Okay, so he, he first heard it on The Curse of the Fate. How old is he? He's, he looks like he's bloody 12. My man, look. <laughs> look at that. Hot summer's afternoon when they recorded it. Man, back in the old days. Um, so your whole television uh, career is kind of revenge against your parents. Yeah, I think it might be. It's cheaper than therapy. Oh, it depends on therapy, I guess. Uh, Hanya, David, and uh, David Tennant was your first doctor, wasn't he? Yes, I was very much a David Tennant, uh, a fan of David Tennant's first tenure. I remember him being so captive, so captivated by him and Billy Piper's Rose. So she really is a child of the new generation. Wow, that's kind of wild. Okay. Did you ever tell him that on set that you loved him as a teenager? Would that not have been terribly professional? That would have been a weird conversation, which I hope is on the DVD, right? I, I want to see that conversation. Uh, I don't think I, I put it quite that way, but I did demonstrate a pretty encyclopedic knowledge of his episodes. Oh, wait, she really is a fangirl. Okay, I'm, I'm warming up to her a lot now. Uh, uh, he knew I was going, again, assuming she's telling the truth. Uh, he knew I was going back at, and rewatching a lot of them while uh, we were working together, uh, which I think was, is, uh, he was quite amused by. Me coming back next morning with a question about the Ood or the Adipose, he was like, Are you just going home and watching Doctor Who? I can, I can hear him say that in his Scottish accent, right? <laughs> Which I wish I was. Uh, it was fun to revisit. I remember uh, loving at uh, 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 loving at such a formative time in my life. Well, how old is she? Do they have her age? Let's go back over here. Um, can you button? Do they have like her information? Uh, how old? I mean, she looks young. Do we know anything about her? Uh, let me go back, see if I can find her IMDb. No, her, her Wikipedia or something. About, okay, she's 36. So she's 36, so in uh, uh, 2006, how long, how many years ago is that now? That's, uh, we're in 23, so 13, uh, about 20 years minus what, 16 years. So it's just 20? Not that young. Really? Okay, whatever. So fine. She got into it around 20. Okay, she's 36 now. In 2013, she was 26, right? So in 2003, she was 16. So in 2006, she... Okay, 19. She was young. Okay, but not, not, not kid age, right? Um... Such a formative time you're like, it wasn't like 19. It shouldn't be so formative, but okay. Uh, what's your reaction to Russell's script? I, I, I bet they're good, right? <laughs> Listen, he can write a good email, let alone a script, right? I man and just tore through it. Even as I was reading, uh, e even as a reading experience, it was exciting. I bet it is. I bet it is. Uh, but I kind of got to the end. I thought, well, I pity whoever has to direct that because it's absolute an absolute nightmare. I was planning to email my agent the next day, say it's amazing, but no way. And then I woke up next morning, and uh, next morning, and I was still thinking about it and figuring it out. I said, well. Uh, how could you, uh, how could you actually do this? Because a lot of my episode is really quite weird. This is like the thing that comes out in this interview that the three episodes are qualitatively different. Not qualitatively, they are, are, yeah, definitely have a very, very different feel to e each other. Uh, even at the read through, Rachel, your episode went down so well. I was really jealous you were getting to direct it. Uh, does she the first one, you think? Uh, because there are so many complicated stage direction in mind. The reaction in the room was like, um, what? Sorry. That's got to be in the toy maker's realm, right? That's got to be in the toy maker's realm. It's, that's what it sounds like, isn't it? 
uh, which makes me think it's going to be a disaster. But of course, when you uh, when you come to film it, it's actually really cool. I, I, I Rusty Davis used to read all the uh, stage note, uh, stage directions in the scripts, uh, which he does very well. Uh, but yes, of course, when you uh, come and film, it's actually really cool. I've got um, a lot of similarities with my, two of my favorite films, Aliens and The Thing. Uh, a little bit of DNA of those mixed in. So it sounds like it's a real action adventure thing, right? It sounds like it sounds pretty good. Is this the end of the page? Uh, mixed in with Doctor Who. Okay. <laughs> Look how, old, how, old, how old is he in this? Uh, uh, he looks so young. Man, how is he? Yeah, at least having a beard here he looks like a grown-up, right? Fine. Uh, doink. Rachel, I, re uh, I read all three, and my first reaction was, wow, the first one is classic family Doctor Who. I can't please say that again. Oh, classic family Doctor Who. I want classic family Doctor Who, right? Which is why Jinx Monsoon is make me nervous, right? Uh, the, uh, it's bringing back the world that Russell left in 2010. That's not really classic. Family Doctor said, like, Russell's Doctor Who was very unique, right? It wasn't like Robert Holmes' classic uh, family Doctor Who. I mean, Tom Baker, Robert Holmes, I would say. Um, yeah, David Cameron left, and then after it became... Uh, and then... Uh, and then after that, it became much more expensive with Russell really throwing his massive imagination up at, uh, at, uh, while it uh, while being thoughtful about setting up the next series. So, yeah, this sounds like very toy maker-ish, doesn't it? So Tom says, each special has a different flavor, like Russell's flexing his muscles and showing all the different things Doctor Who could do. You know, again, I just want to, uh, you know, uh, uh, bewail the awful rollout of Jinx Monsoon's casting, right? I mean, man, if you're going to do a controversial casting like this, like that, you really need to be able to balance the reaction. The rea reaction hasn't been good. I mean, it's been good by the crazes on Twitter, right? But, like, regular people have been like, Wait what? <laughs> My favorite uh, favorite episode features lots of uh, lots of people in lots of scenes. There's soldiers. There's battles. And I thought I haven't uh, I haven't always succeeded in doing the actual stuff, which is uh, 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 loads of extra, loads of extras. Uh, that were uh, that one in the past. Really? Wait a minute! You did the whole um, World War World War One scenes. They they were pretty good. I thought. Uh, with loads of extra in the past, this is really scary for me. So I was determined to, um, uh, I was really, really, I was determined to do do that part really, really well. And it's all about embracing what scares you. I mean, honestly, that 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 is like pure truth in terms of in terms of being a a, uh, a great creator, right? You've always got to go into places where you're uncomfortable. With. Again, this is why I always like Nick Briggs' stuff because I think he he always seems to be pushing himself forward somehow. Which uh, uh, I I personally, you know, I appreciate it. Yeah, let's see what this box hat is over here. Uh, doink. Rachel Tully, special one, uh, who produced uh, produced by John John Waters Films Hairspray. What? Produced by John Waters Films Hairspray and Cry Baby. Really? Wow. Okay, I like. I remember both of those movies. Uh, before she made her directorial uh, uh, debut with Fred is Dead: The Final Nightmare. I remember that as well. After making Tango, she made Tango. What? What? That, that, what's all this? Go to page view. There. I like Tango. That that was with what's the name? No, not look. Oh, Go back to page view. Yes, I'm trying to zoom in so I can read it. You pain and bloody ass. Okay. Now let's zoom out this bit. Okay. Let's see if I can move there without without it clicking somewhere. Okay. Tank girl. Um. Do 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 do. In ninety five, Rachel moved to, uh, into TV directing. Where uh, where extensive transatlantic credits include Band of Gold, I haven't seen it. Touching Evil, heard of it. Uh, Ali McBill, no, I remember that. The Flash, seen that. Supergirl, seen that. Sherlock, ugh, crap. Uh, Riverdale, haven't seen it, but don't think it's bad. American Girl's quite good. Uh, she directed seven of the previous episodes of Doctor Who, including all the uh, three Capaldi's uh, season finales. They're all excellent, uh, including the song on Twice Upon a Time and the highly acclaimed Heaven Sent, which is not very rewatchable, weirdly enough, right? Tom Kingsley, special number two, directed the first, uh, directed first two series of hit sitcoms, BAFTA, a BAFTA award-winning 
Staff, uh, staff Let's Flats, uh, and Supernatural uh, Hit Ghosts. Okay. I heard a ghost. I haven't seen it. He oh, Is it like Rent-A-Ghost? Oh, give, bring back Rent-A-Ghost. That's what I say. He also directed three episodes of This Is Going To Hurt The BBC, the claimed 2022 adaptation of Adam Kay's best-selling book. Uh, earlier in his career, he also co-directed uh, uh, feature films Black Pond and The Darkest Universe. Oh, so I did have his IMDb right, right? With his friend... Uh, uh, with his friend and former colleague, uh, uh, former Footlights colleague, Will Sharp. Uh, for, uh, the former earned uh, them an even standard Most Promising Newcomers Award uh, and a BAFTA nomination for Outstanding Director. Okay, well, again, again, this, sounds, this all sounds good. Chan Hanya Button. We're going to go with Hanya Button, all right? Hanya Button. Uh, Special Three is a uh, director and screenwriter who began her career as a writer and assistant director in various films. Please, if you want to work in, in entertainment, if you want to work as a director, I, I, if you like to talk to, get yourself any freaking job. A runner is fantastic. Intern, anything. Get Being around gets you work, moves you up. Get yourself any job. Um... Runner, assistant director on various films, including the Harry Potter franchise. She made a feature film de debut with the uh, 2015 black, com uh, black comedy Burn, 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 followed by the biological drama Vita and Virginia. What's a biological? Bi biographical. That makes much more sense. I mean, everything. Uh, Vita and Virginia, starring Gemma, uh, uh, Gemma Arteron. Uh, no, Gemma Ar Ar Arterton. Gemma Arterton, who was like for a moment going to be like the new sexy uh um you know english star and then kind of vanished so she was in the bad james bond movie and the st trinians movie <laughs> along with jody a oh, man go and watch go and watch the music video from that first st trinians movie which has jody dancing in it really badly <laughs> just like really it's an embarrassingly badly uh, and then watch it with the sound off it's even funnier <laughs> Uh, uh, that's not a nice thing to do. But anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, Olivia de, uh, de Bicky. Fire. Uh, her television event is called BBC Wartime Adorama World of Fire. Uh, stars historical epic The Spanish Princess and Acorn TV's uh, Whistable Pearl. Okay, don't know any of that stuff. Fine. Kanye says it was the most expensive thing, expansive thing, probably most expensive thing as well. I've uh, I've ever read every page. Uh, every page I turned, it was a different world, a different idea, uh, a different sort of bonkers and inspiring adventure. It was this ultimate luxury. I'll go. Uh, I'll read it and go. This writer is at the very peak of his ability. See, this is the thing that gives me hope about Rusty Davis. This writer is the very peak of his ability. Is completely unbound and confident in what he's putting on page. That sign is. is is a fair is is true right he is very confident in what he's doing which again i mean that just like is a good counterbalance to uh the bad pr we've had recently hopefully it's just pr um it's completely unbound and confident in what he's putting on paper which is as a director is very very empowering it's very it's really empowering i just re reworded for no reason it's challenging in the most positive way uh, possible for someone to go uh here's a big idea uh let's see let's see you go do it um yeah okay can uh can anything in your cv prepare you for directing doctor doctor who so they asked they asked Hanya. uh it's definitely its own world it uh, definitely is there we go uh, again i i look at what's in neil patrick harris uh, uh um oh, God. it's like give us some more info russell i i what are you planning on doing to us uh, um, you can watch uh, uh, comparative sorts of fantasy worlds like Marvel and DC, but Doctor Who is really its own beast. It's, it really is true, right? That, that really is true. Uh, it's got such a big heart, and it's a uh, uniquely human in the uh, in that you've got these beautiful scenes that speak eloquently and uh, about how joyful and painful. It is to be a human being. Ooh. <laughs> Again, it can be excited. Uh, uh, and having the doctor observe that it's one of the most uh, intelligent and emotional, eloquent things about the show. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, it's accompanied by these brilliant, imaginative, fantasy-driven sequences. Uh, I uh, I come from do uh, doing a lot of work on ambitious high-end TV. So my own, so in my own way, I had a lot of context mounting some of the uh, ambitious sequences 
that we did. But you can, uh, but, but you can't say, but you can't say there's anything in it that uh, uh, in the show that I've uh, that I've done before. Being a, oh, well, okay, well, again, you're 36. Okay, it doesn't strike me you've got that much experience. But I think you're probably going to be okay. Being a director uh, on this very uh, on on this was very much like being a magician, having them pull uh, having pull every trick out of the bag and speak every language. Okay, fine. Okay, <laughs> um, let's keep going. Doink. I by the way, this meet the beat. I mean, th th this gives me a lot of hope, right? Because this looks fantastic. Hang on, doink. Yeah. Oh, I'm pressing the wrong button. That's why. Okay. I mean, again, again, the beat the meat looks just freaking incredible. It really, genuinely does. Uh, <sighs> come here, come back. Uh, it paints with every colour possible. Uh, our episode is like every song playing at the same time. An explosion of ideas. <sighs> it sounds like it's going to be good, doesn't it? It does sound like it's going to be good. Here's the thing. Yeah, I mean, could it really be something for everybody? Could it really? I, my, my main concern with Jigs Monsoon is the is grooming, right? That's really it. That's my main overwhelming concern. Other than that, I'm really kind of mellow. Um, it's those ideas and sounds and colors and performances. I can't quite uh, believe that everything that uh, uh, every, that uh, believe everything that it does in an hour. Oh, okay, uh, Tom says Tom, uh, whatever his name is, Kingsley. Uh, I've done a lot of sitcoms which tend to have very low budgets. With something like Ghost, I'm quite off. Uh, I'm often. Uh, I'm quite often. I'm literally doing the effects myself on the laptop. Wow, really? That's kind of wild. So that's giving me a good grounding on how, uh, on how, even if there's no money to spe uh, spend on effects, you can keep it. Uh, you 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 can uh, keep it. This this is this is really heartening, right? This is where good filmmaking comes from, right? Not having enough money. That's why uh, I would say Marvel films have just been shit for too long. Uh, since Disney bought them, apparently, yeah, I, I would say Disney bought them. Uh, I filmed a uh, was a lot of tests for this in my kitchen, just working out how we're going to do certain things. I like stuff like that, right? I like be becoming real, like do doing it in me in your kitchen, right? Uh, in the uh, in the great make do and men tradition of Doctor Who directors, right? Yeah, exactly. There's one effect sequences uh, sequence in my episode where. We need a site to grow bigger, and literally uh, involves uh, somebody standing on a li uh, standing on a little box. Okay, and that's the level we were at. Uh, uh, okay, so it sounds very Alice in Wonderlandy. Then, on the other hand, we had these uh, incredible CG uh, CG environments. Oh, oh, bit bit of a wraith warrior there. Uh, tell us about working with David and Catherine. It seems that they came back to Doctor Who for the sheer love of it. Uh, was that was that obvious on set? Very much so. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I started reading this article with basically that point. Right. We do the vibe I get. I got from two thousand five to now is sheer happiness about working together. Right. That's the total vibe I get. Very much so. They have a great chemistry and a great loyalty to each other, uh, which uh, which was apparently from the first moment of meeting. They both have uh, such a sheer love and respect for the show. I, I can get it from David. I didn't know that about uh, Catherine. Although, you know, she was in uh, uh, as a guest star, right? Especially, and then she came back. So I think I guess that does show she does like it. Well, she didn't know anything about it before she started, though. Uh, what about Tim? David's thinking about the audience uh, all the time in everything he does. You can tell. You can tell, and uh, I think it's one of the reasons made around the world in eighty days so work so well. I really enjoyed that, right? I really genuinely enjoyed that. Like, I'll, I'll be easy to, I, you know, a lot of things. Man, everybody hated Mandalorian this week with Lizzo and Jack Black. I, I kind of liked it. <laughs> I don't know, tell you, I kind of liked it. Uh, and when with Catherine, she really come, uh, connects with the history and the backstory of her character. So I was impressed by her recall of the emotional beats of the Doctor Donna. Uh, had uh, from the first uh, run together. I'm sure she remembers. Okay, that's what made it so real. Uh, both of them... There we are. Both of them has uh, uh, such a command for their characters and ability to uh, live in them and instinctively know uh, what's right for them. They were working hard but never looked like, uh, look, look, uh, looked like effort. 
kind of, I, I hate to say, that's kind of the vibe I, I've, I've got, got off shooty as well, right? It totally is the kind of vibe I, I got off shooty. Uh, I think, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm still looking forward to it. I, amazingly, I keep double checking myself. Are you still looking forward to it? Yes, I actually am. I'm still looking forward to it. Uh, they couldn't have been more jo joyful. That, uh, the second that doctor opened up his mouth as a doctor uh, in the re in, in the read-through, you could hear the entire room sigh with joy at having him back. They said the same thing about Nick, uh, Nick Briggs when he first did the Dalek voice in the... Uh, 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 in in the read through for for Dalek, right? It really is. Uh, they're so good. they're so good together. That is true. I mean, look, Doctor and Donna, one of the all time great Doctor and oh, well, you can say that about Doctor Martha, Doctor Rose as well, can't you? One of the all time great Doctor companion uh, uh, um, link ups, right? Uh, they're so good together. They do uh, they do these characters. They know them so well. Occasionally, I uh, I need to give them a little nudge in one in one direction. Uh, and half the time they they will be all good, and half the time they will be. Uh, David might be like Tom. I'll absolutely try it, but I'm not actually sure the doctor would do that. Oh, yes, God, yes, David, say that again. I mean that again. That shouldn't give me an erection, but it actually does. Uh, well done, David. Uh, uh, he knows what he's doing, uh, David. Uh, uh, he knows what he's doing, Dave. Cook. Can you imagine if anybody said that during the Jodie Whittaker years? Uh, uh, look, I'll do that. I don't think the Doctor will do that. What? Everything in this script! <laughs> Everything in the script written with the name Chibno on it. Um, uh, and he'll try He'll try and think, oh, oh wow, came for a laugh. Uh, he literally runs uh, 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 He runs onto the set every morning. He's so confident. He's uh, such calm-friendly way. Well, how do you run in a calm-friendly way? Uh, he's like, uh, just very happy to be there. He seems like uh, a man who's very settled, very happy, and Catherine brings this extra cheeky energy uh, to the stuff, which is uh, which is often just trying to make David laugh. If you haven't heard it, by the way, uh, Big Finish has a great Donna Noble box set called uh, Kidnap. Really good. Really highlights why uh, Catherine Tate is so good. Uh, I have the very strong image. We were in the underground parking lot in London. Uh, which is the most annoying location because we're in London. Well, uh, why, why are we in a London underground parking lot? You, you, you could be, yeah, pretty much anywhere for that. Uh, they're not fun places to start with. Plus, it was noisy. It was really noisy, and it was a night shoot. I was dreading everything to do with it. And we're setting up. I turn around and running down the ramp. There's David Tennant in a complete joy. Uh, uh, all of a sudden, I feel like David's here. It's all going to be fine. It's all going to be fun again. This is the overwhelming vibe from the production and from 2005 to 2010. Like, just a very happy place. You know, like, it was a, uh, Neil, uh, what was it? Uh, what was it? One, the, the, one of the original producers, he had, uh, Phil, Phil Connorson literally said he, fe they said he fell onto his knees and started crying when he, when he, when he heard they were coming back, right? Because uh, uh, it was such a great time in their life. Directors in distress. Uh, I do like the box outs. Doctor Who is famously one of the hardest television shows in the world to make. As a director, uh, what, uh, what's fun to, uh, what's the fun to stress ratio? Mm, interesting. Making Doctor Who is always exciting uh, and always a thrill. Rachel assures us it's it's always fun. And um, being on the sixties and having David and Catherine just uh, uh, seeing David and Catherine open his mouth and say the lines of the Doctor was enough to bring joy. Second person said that now, okay? Literally the second person said that. Uh, but yes, in terms of the day-to-day uh, -day production, the stress level is massive. There, have, uh, there are times when you're having absolute blast, but underneath it, your, your hair's on fire. Well, it's a job, isn't it? Uh, what was reassuring for me, says Tom, was being able to chat with Rachel and hear that she was be, uh, finding it stressful because I thought, Rachel's done a lot and she'll probably be finding it a breeze. Uh, apparently not. Uh, for for Hanya, I haven't... Uh, uh, Hanya? Uh, it was... Uh, it very much depends on the day. There's never a day when you uh, when you forget you're doing Doctor Who. It, you're a, a small part in a massive legacy that... She's saying everything right, okay? She's saying everything right. In a massive legacy... That has been so brilliant. People have been involved. Uh, uh, people have been involved in. That's quite humbling. You don't march around thinking I'm a director because it's so much because uh, uh, it's so much bigger than you are. 
Uh, so much bigger. Yeah, so much bigger than you. Uh, and you feel supported by its legacy rather than intimidated by it. Okay, I think that's very much the Russell T. Davis uh, working environment. And it was... Oh, and it was, oh, it was going to be fun, and it was fun. Next page. Doink! Uh, so, Peter... So, Peter Cabello still is still your... So, is Peter Cabello still your Dr. Rachel, or is David giving him run for the money? Uh, you're asking uh, you're asking me a question that will get me killed. Well, not, not by us. We'll kind of like to know. Uh, uh, but she was very defining for the uh, 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 12th Doctor re uh, era, wasn't she? Uh, sorry, let me put it another way. Uh, do they do they differ much in their approaches to the job? Oh, they are different. They're, they're, they're both the Doctor they uh, and they... Uh, and they're both their doctors, but Peter is a little more uh, rehearsal orientated than David in terms of wanting to experience more, to play uh, with the lines more. Peter will give you uh, three completely different takes on something, whereas David, once he settles on on what he's uh, what he wants to do uh, and, and uh, what the doctor would do, he's very consistent with it. Uh, I'll say it's that the biggest point of difference is it's Joyce working with both of them. Do you only work with Scottish doctors? Well, I guess you've got to do a bit of Sylvester McCoy then, haven't you, mate? I mean, it's, 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 it's just, you know, uh, the rules, apparently. Uh, I do. I will walk across the Atlantic to work... Uh, walk across the Atlantic to work with either of them. Okay. Uh, what was it like filming at Wolf Studios? Ah, yes, the famous new... Uh, uh, oop. The famous new uh, uh, Wolf Studios, the uh, where they put uh, uh, tons of money into it. Doing. Well, it was like filming Wall Street. Yeah, there we go. Let me try and do that without it moving. Aha! There we go. The day I arrived, I had jet lag. The first thing I did was put me in a virtual TARDIS. And you put on VR goggles and, and walk through the TARDIS like an amusement park ride. I wonder what TARDIS it was, right? What TARDIS you reckon it was? Uh, uh, it was like an amusement park ride, which was mind-blowing in itself. And then they took me on a tour of the stages, which were just huge. Basically... Okay, can you put the VR TARDIS for free online so we can play with it? Okay, I want the VR TARDIS, right? And I, I got PlayStation VR. Not many people have it, so give me a VR bloody TARDIS, right? They're basically the biggest stages I've ever seen. They were completely empty apart from one tiny wee big angel. Well, it was full size wee, but it looked tiny there. Ooh, 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 ooh. Why is there a wee big angel in there? Ah, uh, I want to know. Uh, Tom said I had a VR uh, VR tour as well, but I couldn't really uh, work it. They kept it, it, I kept breaking it. <laughs> uh, did that uh, worry them a bit, Tom? That the guy they hired to uh, direct this is uh, this technically? Oh, ah, come back. What are you doing? Technically, um, where is it? I've, I've totally lost my place. Oh, technically demanding TV show. Couldn't work a VR headset. Well, that's the problem. Yeah, probably, but it was too late by then. They'd already signed the contract, got the money. Nothing's happening, baby. It's all mine now, right? I remember... Who was it? Um, Jason Alexander from Seinfeld, right? Before the Seinfeld finale, he was on uh, uh, Howard Stern, right? The Howard Stern show, which... Yeah, but we're deep in the 90s. And they say, well, does it suck? Which actually it did. <laughs> it said, well, listen, I cashed the check now. Nothing you can do. <laughs> uh, I'm a bit like that. I can't even play computer games. Okay. They're not that hard to play, mate. Uh, Hanya. Hanya. Uh, you're pretty much uh, uh, grew up on films that's like Harry Potter. Uh, Hanya's dad is Roy Button OBE, a former War uh, Warner Brothers S, whose 300 film credit include the assistant director on Superman, The Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi. Uh, how does Babel compare? Well, now we finally uh, now we finally found out how you got the uh, uh, got got into the industry. Uh, I did for better. I mean, I hope she's good as well. I did for better or worse gr uh, grow up on sets. Uh, the ambition of the uh, visual world at Babel doesn't feel smaller. At all, it feels uh, uh, it's a fabulous facility. Uh, you uh, you also got to play uh, uh, play on the new titles. OMG! Oh my gosh, it's enormous. Said no one to me ever. <laughs> I mean, it's absolutely beautiful. Said no one to me ever. <laughs> it's sort of church like in scale. Said no one to me ever. <laughs> 
<laughs> and, it's, uh, and yet it's also an intimate space that takes you from one place to another, said no one to me ever, uh, or even larger, wider world. Um, so much detail and love and thought has gone into it. I can't wait to see this freaking TARDIS set. Look, Russell, mate, Russell, we need to be excited again. Can you get us excited? I'm not asking for a handy. Just a few pictures of the TARDIS, okay? okay that's all you need, okay? That's all I'm asking for, mate. Uh, um... Uh, and even wider light as well. So uh, so much detail and love and thought has gone into it. You can point the camera anywhere, uh, and it um, uh, and it looks amazing. It looks amazing, balls. Uh, Rachel says I was around for the four months watching it being built. Four months, and they talked this up this tower to set so bloody much, right? Four months to build a set, bloody hell, right? And I was having all. I mean, listen, I really believe that maybe Disney's fate might be riding on this. Look, they they just had an investor call which was a disaster, right? They are they are in free fall. They, Mandalorian is being rejected wholesale and it's the best thing they've done in the Star Wars world. Uh, uh, Marvel's dead in the water. They're going to try and revive it with Secret Invasion. Really, the, the trailer for Secret Invasion was basically Nick Fury said, yeah, I know you haven't seen any Marvel movies since the, that last uh, Avengers movie. Uh, I've been away too. Now we're going to come back. Yeah, that, They're trying to bring you back in with that, right? I don't know, but they need a successful franchise. And Doctor Who, they're banking heavily on it being it. If it's not that, right, if it's not a successful franchise, they may be, uh, uh, Disney may be uh, broken up, right? I think it's really get, get, getting tough there, right? Um, but having all these conversations about how to like the wall, uh, the wall roundels, I love the roundels, and things like that, but je uh, I just keep thinking, it will never be ready in time. In four months, it's one set. So, uh, so the fact that in the last couple of, uh, whoop, last couple of uh, days of my contract, we finally got in there. Was amazing. Okay, what set? <coughs> what TARDIS set did uh, David Tennant uh, uh, film on? Right, what TARDIS set did did, uh, um, did he film on? I I don't know. I, I like they're not even revealing in Doctor Who magazine. So who knows what Dares uh, dare to Dream? Uh, it's a word. Uh, it's a word only ever really used for Doctor Who fans. A round was so. I'm so, so pleased you said roundel. It's a word only ever used by Doctor Who fans. Well, it's part of my vocabulary now. As directors, how do you feel Doctor is changing in the new era? Can it not be groomy? Okay, that's really what I want. It not to be trying to convince my kids uh, uh, to not play innocently as kids, but rather suck somebody's dick, okay? I would really like that, okay? I would really genuinely like that not to be the case. Uh, um... Uh, I don't know if ambitious has uh, if ambition has changed because the ambition of Doctor Who has always been above and beyond. That's true. Look at the Web Planet. Look at Dalek Invasion of Earth. They 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 just said let's do something and didn't think how to do it, which is always impressive. Uh, but the whole approach has definitely uh, uh, definitely felt different. It's a uh, generous brilliant. Uh, uh, Hania says it's generous brilliant. I uh, think that Russell has returned to uh, something that he's already made a success. It's a mark of someone who truly has a lot of love and respect for the material. Well, that's absolutely true. Finally, there was a was there a particular moment for you when you uh, that made you stop and think this is really going? Uh, this is a really mad way to make a living. Um, I'm sure there was. Let's see what it. I think for me it was we were uh, filming outside with the Wraith Warriors for the first time. Uh, uh, yeah, and they look great as well. Uh, there were these. Hang on. So there were the. Uh, there were these eight foot tall monsters on still in impressive plastic suits. David Tennant said they smelled like he thought Rafe Rory. So I thought would smell uh, all plasticky, right? Uh, they, uh, who couldn't see a thing and can barely stand up. So cl a classic Doctor Who situation. David comes along and says he wants to photograph uh, uh, a photograph of them. Said, that smell. I'm like, this is where it comes from. That smell. That slightly rubbery smell is exactly everything I remember. Uh, I just thought it's amazing to do this job. Tom says, Tom uh, Kingsley says, I remember one day, which is a good uh, good illustration of how varied it is, where uh, where we started in the morning filming uh, something outdoors uh, in a really beautiful location, and we came 
uh, inside to uh, an alien. Uh, came inside uh, to do an alien creature, and then we filmed a robot, and then we did a pick up with Kat, David and Catherine running through this completely imaginary location on green screen. I bet it's going to look great. I bet it's going to look great, right? Uh, uh, and all of these moments, uh, which are really cool and completely different, uh, from one signal episode. <laughs> and I just thought, yeah, uh, uh, a kid in the candy store. And, and Hanya. Who, if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, darling, I do apologize. Uh, uh, I absolutely know the moment, okay? But I would uh, have to leave it, uh, leave the planet if I told you. There's a particular moment in my episode which will be uh, apparent when you watch it that it was like uh, out of this world, and you'll never, and I know I'll never do anything like it again. I don't know. I don't know what that could be, but it, it, it sounds kind of exciting. So I don't know about you. I don't know about you. I, I, um, this is this has actually done quite a lot to reinvigorate my excitement, right? This has actually done. Uh, uh, um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I tell you, uh, um, we just need some good news, Russell. We need some news that we will go. Oh, yeah, this is good. But this actually this has actually done quite quite uh, quite the trick. I think it's going to be good, right? I think the sixth anniversary is going to be good. Uh, uh, I am 66% sure, right? And that's not much, right? But I'm 66% sure that the uh, shooting gut was serious is going to be good as well. I don't think it's going to be super groomy, right? I don't think it's going to be groomy at all. I think this is probably a, a breakout, somewhat straight role for this Jinx Monsoon person. Again, I got a lot more context with them. Join me on Saturday night. That'll be tomorrow night, uh, uh, if you're watching this in real time. Join me on Saturday night when, we're, uh, when we go over that. It'll be 7 o'clock UK. Uh, until then, ladies and gentlemen, may I say, have a freaking awesome Friday! Yeah!